Someone asked the other day if ceiling and floor functions can be surjective, and if so, how do we prove it? So that's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. Always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. Now the answer to this question is that it depends on the domain and the codomain. Those are very important parts of our definition of a function when we're talking about surjectivity or injectivity or bijectivity. So for this lesson, we'll go over some examples and we'll flex our surjective muscles, get some practice with surjectivity. Shouldn't take too long because it's pretty straightforward uh, with ceiling and floor functions. So we'll jump into it. We'll start by uh, taking a look at what a ceiling function is. So the ceiling function, sometimes written like this, sometimes written with this kind of neat bracket notation, it takes a number and it rounds it up to the nearest integer. So the ceiling function of x is the smallest integer that's greater than or equal to x. So just making sure we're all on the same page here with the ceiling function. What is the ceiling function of, or just the ceiling of 3.5? Well, it rounds it up to the nearest integer. It's the smallest integer that's greater than or equal to 3.5. That, of course, is 4. Now, what if we put, whoops, that was a pretty bad bad ceiling. What if we put an integer in the ceiling function? What is the ceiling of 3? The smallest integer greater than or equal to 3 is 3 because 3 is an integer and 3 is greater than or equal to 3. So that's how the ceiling function works and the floor function in the interest of time I won't bother writing out. It works very similarly except it rounds down to the nearest integer. So for the definition of the floor function we would take the maximum of all integers that are less than or equal to x, and that's how that would work. So let's look at an example of a domain and a codomain and take note of whether the ceiling function would be surjective with that domain and codomain. So here we've got a function f that maps the real numbers to the real numbers, and let's just assume that f is the ceiling function. So f is the ceiling function mapping the reals to the reals. Is this function going to be surjective? Which means, is every number in the real numbers getting mapped to by the ceiling function? The answer in this case is no, because the ceiling function only maps to integers, because by definition, the ceiling function is the minimum of a particular set of integers, so clearly it can only take on integer values. Thus, not every real number is going to get mapped to by the ceiling function, and so this is not surjective. And again, for this example, we're talking about ceiling functions, so we assume that f was the ceiling function from the reals to the reals. Again, very simply, it's not surjective because by definition of the ceiling function, it only takes on integer values. So not every real number is gonna get mapped to. So then if we wanna find a domain and a codomain so that the ceiling function will be surjective, it seems reasonable that we would try making the codomain the integers, and that might work. So let's try that. Let's call this next function h, and again, we're assuming that h is the ceiling function, but it's got a domain. Let's keep the real numbers as our domain, and its codomain, this time, we'll say is the set of integers. That's a bad z, let me try that again. So is this going to be surjective? Well, if it is surjective, if I wanna prove that this is surjective, then for any value in the codomain that you give me, so any integer, I should be able to give you a value in the domain that the ceiling function is going to map to the value you gave me from the codomain. So let's say you give me an integer k from the codomain. Is, is there always going to be an element in the domain that the ceiling function will map to this integer k? And the answer is yes. k is an integer. And since the integers, it's a subset of the real numbers, so we know that k is a real number, which means we can plug it into our ceiling function. So what is the ceiling function of k? 
Well, since k is an integer, the smallest integer greater than or equal to k is just going to be k. So with our ceiling function that we're calling h, in this case, h of k will always map to k. So if you give me any number from the codomain, any integer, I can provide you a number from the domain that will map to k. And thus, this function with this domain and this codomain is surjective. And remember, both of these functions, they're ceiling functions. We're just changing uh, the domain and codomain, which is why I'm calling one f and one h. So hopefully that seems pretty straightforward. And of course, you wouldn't, uh, using k, that's the most obvious answer to the problem, but you could also provide k minus one half. k minus one half is a real number, so that's in the domain of h, and the ceiling of k minus one half is k. So that would be another answer you could provide to prove that h is surjective in this case. Now let's do one more example with a function we'll call g, and let's say that this is going to be the floor function, so it rounds an input value down to the nearest integer. Now we got kind of a weird domain here. What we're going to see here is that just because our codomain is the integers, this is not going to be surjective. So just having a integer codomain, that doesn't guarantee that a ceiling or floor function will be surjective. The domain is also important. So the domain we've got here, we can think of this as the set of even numbers, but every number is kick, kicked back half. So instead of two, we've got one and a half. Instead of four, we've got three and a half. Instead of zero, we have negative one half. So you see what's going on there. So is this function g going to be surjective? Is every integer getting mapped to? And remember, we're saying g is the floor function now. We're having some fun shaking it up. And so why is this function not surjective? Well, it's kind of neat. For starters, we'll write the domain in a, uh, a better way. We'll use some set builder notation, right? So notice that this domain is just equal to this set using set builder notation. So it's the set containing all numbers that are one half less than an even number. Take an even number, subtract one half, all such numbers are in our domain. That's what our domain is. So given that this is our domain, what types of numbers is the floor function, which in this case is g, just with this domain and codomain, what is this floor function going to map these values to? Well, what's useful, since floor and ceiling functions, they map numbers up to the nearest integer or down to the nearest integer, we want to know what integers are sort of on either side of 2k minus 1. For any number in our domain, any number 2k minus 1 half in our domain, what is the greatest integer less than or equal to 2k minus 1 half? Well, that would be 2k minus 1. What is the smallest integer that's greater than or equal to 2k minus 1 half? That would simply be 2k. So the, the floor function, which in this case is g, is going to map every number 2k minus 1 half from the domain to a number 2k minus 1, a number of that form, because the floor function maps the number down, down to the nearest integer. 2k minus 1, that's an odd number. That's a another way to define odd numbers. Usually we say 2k plus 1, either one works just fine. So what we're seeing actually is that this floor function with this domain is only mapping to odd numbers and therefore it is clearly not surjective. Because of how the domain is defined and because we're using the floor function, every number from the domain is going to get mapped to an odd number. So it's not surjective. Now what would happen if we said that g was the ceiling function in this case? Well, consider that practice. Let me know in the comments what numbers are going to get mapped to if g was the ceiling function instead of the floor function. And will that make it surjective or is it still not surjective? Let me know and I'll of course leave the answer down in the description. 
So I hope this video helped you understand when floor functions and ceiling functions will be surjective and hopefully start to build up a bit more of an intuition for when that will or will not be the case based on the domain and codomain. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description.